man has punched a girl in the face. As soon as they looked out at him laying there on the ground, I knew right away someone had been hurt. Before lifeguards can get to him, he's helped by the Bondi rescue cameraman. He needs urgent backup. Go right down the other corner, or go home. Go home, go home. Big breath. A surfer keeps the woman afloat until Harrison can get her on the board. You're right, you're right. You're going to jump on. You're going to face up, I'll face the front. Face the front. You're going to light out. All right, you're good. I was gobsmacked. It definitely wasn't the appropriate beach wear to be swimming. It was like some resort where you'd see someone wearing it at a five-star hotel, but you wouldn't wear that swimming down here. Sarai is from Washington, D.C. Ah! Come on. You're come over here and Keep walking over the sand bank. That was the most challenging rescue I reckon I've done for a while. Fully clothed, made it that awkward. You're all right. Just make sure you go right up when the flag's next time, okay? Um, I was like semi drowning. Ah! I, I went like the waves were high, and I went in. I couldn't swim as much as I thought I could. You never know what the, the backgrounds of people are until you actually rescue them and meet them on the beach. Uh, I had no idea, but she was a she was a lifeguard. Been a lifeguard for like seven years back home and I've never experienced that before. What if I didn't know how to, like, assist him? Sarai doesn't intend to take Harrison's job anytime soon. Like, I used to teach swim lessons, and I worked at an actual pool, but I've never been to a beach, so it's completely different. It's more work. Like, usually I thought he could just help me and, like, we just glide through, but no, like, those waves were coming in strong, and, like, we had to, like, force ourselves to go in. Like, I had no idea it was different. Next time Sarai comes down for a swim down at Bondi, go between the flags and maybe find some more appropriate swimming attire. <laughs> Christmas Day. Oh, oh, oh. Before yeah. heading back to the North Pole, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Santa's paying a quick visit to North Bondi. Oh, yeah. At Bondi's south end, lifeguards are gearing up for the Christmas onslaught. I've been here for 17 years now, and today is as big a crowd as I've as I've seen since I've been down here. This is definitely upper level. So we're, we're just pulling out all the stops. At risk of being overwhelmed by inexperienced swimmers, lifeguards break out the big guns. So the jet ski on a day like this is fantastic. It really keeps all lifeguards on the beach. The jet ski then does all the rescues and it's rare then a board has to go in. Within minutes of launching, Jake is called to action. There's about oh, 30 people in that rip out back of the flags. All right, everyone, go in, please. Help us out. Look how many people we got here. We don't need you all out here. If you can't swim, please go back to shore. Thank you. I think I was in the water for about 20 or 30 seconds before I was, like, picking up swimmers off the back of the flags. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Get on, get on. Just seconds earlier, these swimmers were standing in shallow water. They were just getting pulled off the back of the sandbag and they all just sort of clambered on. It's got five. Keep it all. Keep it all. Keep it all. Hold it to me, all right? Yeah. Hold it to me. I've got four more hands just went up on you guys yesterday. Four swimmers hang off the ski. Go! Get off! Out the back, more are in trouble. Sensing a potentially disastrous situation, Hoppo moves to a cover position. There's like 30 people waiting there. Let's do some mass rescue right now. Then at the north end, lifeguards spot a woman struggling in a rip. She's starting to panic a bit. This one sort of caught us off guard, and when we put our eyes on the rip that she was in, she was going under, and it was one of those moments where you're like, where's the lifeguards? Everyone's pretty far away, and, and she's in dire straits. Loaded with swimmers, Jake can't leave his position. All the way, all the way, all the way. We got, we got there, there. The boys have spotted a, a woman in the rip, and she's really struggling. The situation has also caught the attention of volunteer lifesavers. I'm in, mate. He's going. 
right, come on, mate. Put some big paddles in because this chick, seriously, she's going down. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She, that person is so drowning right now. There's two of them. Oh, Just when we thought we couldn't get any worse, there's two more heads in the same rip, and they weren't looking good either. Oh, my God. Where did they even come from? So we've got three people now needing help. We've got one jet ski in the water and lifeguards scattered everywhere. Oh, she went under. Oh, my God. Joe, mate. From the tower, it's one of the scariest things as a lifeguard because you're watching someone drown and it goes in slow motion the time the buggies get into that person and you're literally sitting there helpless watching them sink. Oh, my God. By the time Hoppo was radioed to go in and he was paddling out, I'd seen it from there. You just got to get there as quick as possible. On the way out, a good Samaritan is helping one of the struggling men. He desperately calls for Hoppo to help his friend further out. So when I got to the guy, it was choppy conditions. He was panicking, but his concern wasn't about himself. It was more about the other woman. At the back of the rip, a young surfer and a volunteer lifesaver have saved the woman's life. That kid just saved that chick's life. Jake arrives for the pickup. All right, Jake's there. Hoppo collects the man. We've got her, we've got her. Yeah, she's, she's got her, we've got her, get on. She wasn't the best swimmer and she'd been sort of fighting that rib. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. She wasn't in a good way. She was a bit, bit distressed when I got to her. Jump on the mat, jump on the mat. Yeah. Even once all the resources arrive and you think the scenario is over, someone who's been fighting a rip for a minute that can't really swim, they've, they've completely fatigued and there could be a rescue board right in front of them and they just can't grab it. So all of a sudden the rescue's not over. Hold on, hold on. So that's it. Holy shit. Got it, as... Yeah, jump up, jump up, jump up. Saving someone's life, wrangling a jet ski and, and, and managing that all at once, that, Hats off to him, he, he's done a great job. You can even hear the panic on Hop's face. Yeah, yep, I'm in. Yeah, I've never heard Hop panic. I've never yeah. heard Hop panic. That was one of the first times I've heard Hop though. Just wigging. Yeah, it was on me. Once you hear Hop start wigging out, start stressing and, and even running, that's when you know it's serious. Today, the water has been invaded, not by dreaded blue bottles, but by some very Australian footwear. Crazy. Yeah. A shoe company is attempting a curious world record, 863 inflatable thongs in a single line. Oh, what they do, they've hired us to um, go out and do the water safety because you don't know who's getting on the blow-up uh, thongs. A lot of people just jump on and may not be able to swim too well. It's soon clear thongs are made for feet, not for surfing. While there's fun and games at the north end, lifeguards are on edge down south. We're gonna, we've come off a very big high tide and we've got an extremely low tide this over. It's changing right now. And what was a safe zone for swimming out in front is now becoming uh, a little bit tricky. It's starting to run and there's a series of holes and gutters on the way up to that outside bank. Kyle is on exchange all the way from Hawaii. He's about to experience one of the busiest days of the year. Hey, uh... Come on the board, I'll take you in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get on the board and lie down right here. The man has been dragged out in the rip and then fallen off his board. He can't swim. Kyle's Hawaiian surfing skills come to the fore. He understood that he couldn't get back in the shore, but he didn't know why. And with a little bit of waves and the onshore winds, just a lot of water's moving around out there. I mean, those guys are going on the boogie board, no fins, and they don't even know how to use the board anyway, so. That's when we come in. As the rip pulls harder with the outgoing tide, more swimmers struggle. For people who don't know, there's a dangerous current right in front of where you're swimming. Everyone that's swimming comes back to shore. There's no swimming in this area. The swimmers make slow progress. Out past the surf zone, one man has a long way to go. Look at me trying to swim. I can't swim. The swimmer can barely lift his arms and begins dog paddling. Yeah, Bondo, central. Yeah. Mate, he's going under. 
before lifeguards can get to him, he's helped by the Bondi rescue cameraman. Right. Kyle races in without a rescue board, while Blake provides backup. Kyle! Just got him. Kyle assists the exhausted man to shore. He's safe. Then, moments later, another swimmer is in trouble. Right, well, there's one right, right in front of you, mate. He's going under. It's only midday, and already Blake is on his eighth rescue. The man is fully clothed, a recipe for disaster. Originally from Pakistan, Shazar now lives in Australia. He observes his Muslim faith by covering up when swimming. For men, it's different. Uh, we just, uh, from navel to our knees, we cover that. So for women, it's all. You should, you should uh, cover that. So it's because of that. A fight has broken out at South Bondi. Lifeguards move in to try and control the situation. In no time, there are a score of police. Always trouble at the beach, man. What I don't like about this is it takes the attention off the water and there's lots and lots of people swimming. Uh, it's, I wish these people would go and uh, practice kickboxing or something like that uh, to channel this kind of aggressive uh, vibration. Just come to the beach to relax. One man has been subdued by police with capsicum spray. Yeah, a day like this, we don't want to let things escalate because if it does, there's so many people, the crowd, there's 30, 40,000 people here and once something starts, someone else will push someone else and it could end up in a all-in brawl. Police finally defuse the situation and give one group a move-on order. It's an eye-opener for visiting trainee Tamika. If you carry on with it, you should be gone, all right? Mate, you know what I'm talking about. Too much tension from too many people, you know, for no reason. No one likes to see it, it's not needed. Then the simmering threat of violence boils over. A man has punched a girl in the face. This guy's asleep, my friend. Huh? Up there, she's bleeding in the mouth. He just hit her all the like, guys up there, they hit her in the face, and she's bleeding. What do you need to happen? You've got to know who it was, otherwise, nothing's going on. Hey, no, no, the no, shot no, no, shot no, 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 Which one hit her? I just saw a drop to the ground, she's bleeding in the face. They were all like bugging us for so long. What, those ones there? All those guys. Well, well, bugging us forever. Black Rhino to Bondi Central. Just put the cameras directly between myself and you and send two cops down. Some blokes just knocked the chick out. He couldn't ID the bloke. He said, I just saw my friend drop to her knees. So just send them down ASAP, the cops. Yeah, I'm just see the cops, I'll get them. The guys come up and start talking to us, like hitting on us, and we're like, oh, we're just laughing because we didn't want to, you know, yeah. start. And we're just like, oh, no, no, no. And then um, one grabbed my friend's boobs, and then she, when like, she clearly she, stated she that said that, that no, I have a boyfriend, I'm not in for this. She, he's, um, she slapped him, and then he just came up and punched in the face. Yep. Next thing I know, she was on the ground with blood, and then I ran to the lifeguard and told yep. him. Yep. And the guy who did it, he was in well, red we... shorts, and he just ran off. And the rest of them were there, well, and the rest of them. One of them, the girl came up, she did punch her in the head, and dropped her to her knees. Police take up the chase. With tens of thousands at Bondi, the cowardly offender could easily get lost in the crowd. Police take evidence. If they find the perpetrator and prove the assault, he could well face a jail sentence. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year! Today, there are no unusual surprises just yet. So this is my first New Year's Day. I've worked in probably about eight years and it's pretty disappointing. Touch wood. I think we're in for a pretty cruisy day, don't end today. The 
first morning of the year doesn't stay quiet for long. How many people don't fit into a narrow runway like that? Oh, this is going to be chaos. <laughs> then, one of the Dutch backpackers reports that a girl is unconscious further up the beach. Whereabouts, mate? Lifeguard's response time is critical. Pretty much on the runway. Reedy finds an unresponsive teenage girl. Boys, can you please bring a medikit down here ASAP? Sorry. The girl is accompanied by her cousin. Do you want to take some history? Yeah. Who's that? She's had two caps of MDMA yesterday. She's 17. And she's also had Lyrica. She's also had Lyrica. Lyrica is a pharmaceutical drug that's normally used to treat seizures and nerve damage. Baggers, baggers, I need the medikit. So when we get to a, a patient and we're doing our, our first OBS, we want to get the vital signs, we want to get breathing, we want to get circulation, which is a pulse. In this case, we didn't have much to go on at all. Okay. She'll be okay. She'll be okay. okay, she's got... Lifeguards, with her, it's okay. Where's she from? She's from Liverpool. She's my cousin. She's from Liverpool. The girl's jaw is clenched shut, making it difficult for lifeguards to administer oxygen. Can you hear us? It just gives a little squeeze on the hand if you can hear me. So now the negatives are starting to add up. We've got MDMA, we've got pharmaceuticals, we've got alcohol, we've got no sleep, and she's only young. It's not looking good in her favour. Just lightly bag it. Lifeguards must assist the girl's breathing using an airbag. Squeeze our hand if you can hear us. All right. Um, Just squeeze your hand. Yeah. In and out of consciousness. And what's um, She's breathing, but very faint and got a very faint pulse. As lifeguards wait for the ambulance, they get an unexpected offer of assistance from the public. So while we're in the thick of things, another element gets added on and two Irish nurses appear from nowhere. Oh, yeah. I'll get a run up. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah? Give us a squeeze. There you are. We don't have one. We can't find it. Yeah, we're trying to get one. Do you want to, um, do you want to go and grab one out of the tower for us? Have you got one? We should yeah, have one we've in got one in the tower, yeah. yeah. We decided that we would send them to go and get one of our pulse oximeters. It's a unit that goes on the end of the finger and can tell a patient's blood oxygen saturation and also their heart rate. The sisters return with the oximeter. Hello. Hi. Um, it's got a pretty fake pulse. Has she taken anything? Yeah, she took MDMA yesterday. To, to Have you done blood sugars with it? Nah, we don't have stuff to do that stuff. Reedy is unsure about how much more help they can offer. When people try and help us on the beach, we don't know the extent of their medical training. So for us to trust that person to treat a critically ill patient is something that we, we try and avoid. Uh, we've got paramedics yeah. coming, yeah. so we're just going to yeah. support yeah. her breathing until the paramedics yeah. come, yeah. So as we're treating the patient, it becomes evident that we can smell alcohol on one or two of the nurse's breath. What time did you get home? Oh, oh you haven't been home yet? We haven't been home. Yeah. <laughs> Worst case scenario, she stops breathing and her heart stops. It's gonna be alright. These guys do this a lot, yeah? It's very it's okay. It's okay. We've got to make the call to get them to step aside. Thank you. Thanks, girls. Thanks a lot. Where's that oximeter? When paramedics arrive, the girl is conscious. But her condition remains serious. Here she is, she's awake. It's okay. It's okay. Alright. No worries. Alright. Right. That's good. Get comfortable. Yeah. Hang on. I'm going to put a few things yeah, on you. Just... And then we're going to get you up into the ambulance, alright? Oh. We're going to get you up on the back. We take up there so we get away from everyone. Right. When we arrive at a patient who's been critically unwell and in quite a lot of danger, to see them recover and then be quite stable, leaving the beach better than we found them, is hugely satisfying for us and we've done our job. <laughs> 7.30 p.m. and there are still thousands on the beach. The lifeguard's shift was meant to finish half an hour ago. Then, at South End, Whippet rescues six swimmers on his own. Suddenly, he abandons the board for another swimmer. He needs urgent backup. They went 
along the shore, along the shore, along the shore, over, and then the car just took him into trouble. Bacon eventually backs up. What started off two Africans turned into uh, probably six to eight people. just mayhem. The teenagers are Sudanese refugees now living in Australia. It's a brutal lesson about beach safety. <laughs> yeah, it's so deep, we don't, like, we don't swim in kind of this water. Like, swimming pool, yeah, it's all right for that. Lifeguard's tolerance wears thin. Attention, everybody is being very foolish. Get out of the water, go and swim in the north end or go home and wrap it up. We probably made, would have had maybe five to six people dead. I mean, it's just lucky we've been held back tonight. I was thought they would have drowned those people. Uh, they, the they can't swim at all. Yes, you in the red. Go and swim somewhere else or go home and swim tomorrow, please. There was these two Aussie blokes that were just holding them up. And I looked and uh, one of them was swimming off and I was like, wonder where he thought he was brushing it. He just went and pulled the third one up from like, under the water. I didn't even see her. Go away. Go right down the other corner or go home. On quieter days, lifeguards have far less people to watch over. But even today, none of them are dropping their guard. It was a Monday, uh, sort of overcast, Bondi. There was a group of people playing Super Bowl because it was Super Bowl Monday for us. And they were just playing it on the beach there, just in front of the tower. I saw one of them make a throw and I was thinking, oh, it's like kind of a fun game. Uh, but then didn't think much more of it, just went back to watching the water. Fresh from watching the Super Bowl on TV, the men aren't holding back on the tackles. When the knock at the door came... Hey, bro, yeah. we just play beach football. Our friends knees. As soon as they looked out at him laying there on the ground, I knew right away someone had been hurt. Oh, let's go. We like this. <laughs> Shut Jack and I headed down to assess the patient. We just saw he was in a lot of pain. Uh, and the patient's name is Joss. He's 31 years of age. Just either got uh, dislocated uh, or uh, broken ankle. Uh, no one seems to be taking responsibility for the tackle. We're playing football. A friend got tackled accidentally, and now he's hurt. This guy gets on That's pretty much all I got to say. Yeah, I don't think the guy in the white bandana probably wanted to say much at all. I heard he was the one that put the hit on. John is an actor who lives near Bondi. He's not a fan of Gridiron, but joined his mates to watch the Super Bowl at a local pub. So you guys have been drinking all day? Since like 11.30. Yeah, all right. I reckon we get him up into the tower. We try and get him on some oxygen. He's definitely yeah. in a bit of pain. Yeah. You could tell he was in shock. When people go into shock, their skin goes clammy and pasty and he was sweating a lot. All right, Johnny, we're going to try and get you in here somehow. Is there a bit of pain here, OK? Can the other side be easier? Yeah. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. You're all right, mate. You're all right. You're all right. Big breaths, big breaths. All right, so we're going to spin around. So yeah, John was a big boy. We had to get him up the beach. It took a few of us. And as we were sort of walking towards the Pavilion stairs, um, he had a bit of a cheer squad and they were all clapping him off the beach. That's a good team effort. Clap him off the field. Solid effort. <sighs> Increasing oxygen supply will help John cope with the trauma. How's that pain out of 10 now? Oh, so when we're looking for injuries on people that aren't obviously compound fractures and where we can't see what's going on, we've just got to feel around. Where's the pain? Am I getting closer to it? No. Oh. Huh? Further up? Uh, lower. Lower? Yeah. So it's in your ankle? Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. Sometimes you'll feel really where the pain is and, and the patient will let you know. So I'm just going to run. Oh. We're going to avoid giving you the whistle just because you've had a few drinks. Seem to be managing the pain pretty good. We knew he'd been drinking since about 11 o'clock. It was now four o'clock. He wasn't overly drunk, but in those sort of situations, we try and avoid the green whistle when we can. Did your team win today at least? Well, What's that? Had a good tackle. Yeah, going for Dwayne. Oh, 
You tackled him? No, no, it was uh, other player. Ah. Gotcha. Uh, so the Ambos arrived and they did their own assessment of the patient, but we had to get him out of the lifeguard tower. Yeah, try and get out through, yeah. Some of John's pain may be dulled by the earlier trip to the pub. Someone get ready to support his leg. But it comes with side effects. So the first few spews, they just head out onto the promenade, something for the local dogs to have for lunch. The poor guy needed to vomit. Doctors discovered that John tore ligaments and fractured a leg bone. Following an operation, he faces two months on crutches. Plenty of time to think about getting square with Dwayne, the man who tackled him. But look, in the end, the real winner was John Spew. 